Not everyone will agree with visiting North Korea, but I've been fascinated by this country for a long time so I just had to go and see it for myself. It's not possible to travel independently, only on a state-run tour and obviously you're only shown what they want you to see. I absolutely do not support the regime that is in place here. Bear in mind everything I filmed was subject to inspection so please take some things that are said by me or others while present in the country with a pinch of salt. Enjoy the video. Kim Jong-un. Diplomatic breakthrough. North Korea's missile capability. Kim Jong-il has died. Little rocket man. A historic meeting. Nuclear arsenal. A demilitarized zone. Armed and dangerous. North Korea. Kim Jong-un. North Korea. Good morning from the DPRK. It's about 6.45 a.m. We just had a wake-up call to the room about 15 minutes ago. The phone just started ringing. Didn't know we were going to get one of them, but I guess that was nice and convenient because we are leaving at 7.30 today. We have to meet the group for s at 7 for breakfast. Slept very well. The beds are very, very comfortable. Um, outside the window, very, very foggy this morning. And there's a lot of this industrial noise coming from the boats that are in the river. I'm not sure what they're doing, but it's making a huge amount of racket out there. That would wreck your head. We went down to the ground floor where everybody congregated in the big dining room to tuck into the Asian breakfast buffet. <laughs> A few eggs, apple segments and slices of toast later we assembled in the lobby and hit the road. We were driving two and a half hours north to Hyangsan, where the International Friendship Exhibition Hall is located. To put it simply, it is a collection of buildings filled with all of the gifts the Kims have received from other countries around the world. Our guide, Miss Hong, spoke to us on the mic for pretty much the entire journey. So during the, the three years of Korean War, the DPRK suffered serious damage. So most of the things in Pyongyang City, the capital city, was destroyed, were destroyed during the war. Completely. Church leaders. So they're encouraging people who are going to war. It's a cemetery for those people fallen during the war, during the Korean War. According to Ms. Hong, when referring to using the bathroom in North Korea, a lot of them refer to a number one as singing and a number two as dancing. So we stopped for some singing and dancing. Souvenirs on sale over there, fruit, uh, amongst other things. <laughs> I'm not bothered with the hassle of trying to haggle and negotiate with yuan and euro and dollars and yeah, good luck. After a while, one of the members of our tour group started asking some very controversial questions about the legal system in North Korea and kept grilling Miss Hong for answers. It got a little awkward for the rest of us and fearing he was overdoing it a little and that we might be murdered, we kissed our loved ones goodbye and prepared for the worst. But thankfully nothing happened, our guides were actually very chill. Actually, I don't know because I've never been in jail before. We arrived at the International Friendship Exhibition Hall, which was built in and presented in a traditional style. Unfortunately, when we got inside, our cameras, phones, etc. were taken off us as we went through a kind of airport style security. As a compromise, here is some footage I found online. The exact size is unknown by outside sources and looking at satellite imagery, you can't see much either as most of it is built into the side of a mountain. All I can say is that it was absolutely colossal. There were massive marble corridors that seemed to go on forever with room after room full of stuff from over 180 countries. So there's a good chance something from your country is in here. 
We all got a little chilly as the whole place was as cool as a fridge to preserve everything inside. We passed by thousands of gifts including a crocodile skin suitcase from Fidel Castro, two armoured trains, one from Mao Zedong, the other from Joseph Stalin, a gold cigarette case from Yugoslavia, a bronze Soviet tank miniature from East Germany and a stuffed caiman holding a tray of wooden cups presented to the great leader by the Sandinistas, a Nicaraguan socialist political party. But there's nothing from the US, right? Wrong. There were a number of things from the US, including a basketball signed by Michael Jordan, sent by Madeleine Albright, the former US Secretary of State. My brother and I were shocked to find out there were three or four cabinets full of gifts from Ireland. A lot of these gifts were Waterford Crystal, which is one of Ireland's most famous crafts, and most of these Irish gifts were sent to North Korea by the Communist Party of Ireland. Wait, what? The Communist Party of Ireland? Is that a thing? Huh. What a bunch of losers. After parading around while passing groups of North Korean citizens that were probably being fed an even more fabricated version of how great other countries think North Korea is, we went into a room to pay our respects to a wax figure of Kim Jong-il, which was in a large room dedicated to just him. Now, I found a poor quality picture of this, but really, I can't fathom how terrifyingly real this wax figure looked in person. It was genuinely as if we were standing right in front of him. So we've just come out of the first building and my god, apparently there's 140 rooms with gifts from all over the world. There's 180 something countries that have provided a gift, including Ireland, which I was surprised. There's Waterford Crystal in there, which I didn't expect to see. You all right there? <laughs> <laughs> this is my Portuguese friend and my Singaporean friend. Look. Everybody wants to be on film now. See, I was hanging back to do a little bit of vlogging. But anyway, she also said that if you were to stand in front of each item in there for one minute, then it would take over a year to see everything. That puts it into perspective. I'm putting my footprint. No, don't do that, Rob. We went into the other building where our stuff was taken off us and we saw more gifts and this time paid our respects to wax figures of Kim Il-sung and his second wife and war hero Kim Jong-suk. She actually died in 1949. Google if you want to know more. Again, terrifyingly real in person. You've broken something. You're, you're a goner. You're a goner. We got our stuff back and went up to the balcony to relax, with the option to buy tea, coffee and other drinks. Looking around, you can't deny this place is absolutely stunning. We were guided into the nearby souvenir shop where I gave in and bought a cheap fridge magnet for something like 20 cent before Robbie and I snuck back out onto the balcony to scavenge a few scraps left by the others before we left. We got back onto the bus for a very short drive to Poyong Sa Temple which was originally founded in 1024 under the Koryo dynasty. It's almost a thousand years old, has been rebuilt three times since its initial construction and has a long history of enduring warfare, even serving as a stronghold against the Japanese 400 years ago and being bombed during the Korean War. North Korea has actually separated itself from religion and is an atheist state, but they have allowed a small amount of religious activities and those that practice require approval from the state. A number of the country's national treasures are housed here, including the Sokka Pagoda, which is 10 meters tall and has 104 bronze bells hanging from it. We met one of the monks who told us more about the temple. He seemed like a very nice man. Unbelievably hot here at this temple or just in the DPRK in general, struggling a little bit, have no sun cream, definitely not a good idea and I don't think it's too cheap to buy here either. <laughs> and our tour leader, Kim, she has an umbrella. I thought only the Chinese did that, but I'm mistaken. <laughs> uh, actually, during the Korean War, this final hall was uh, not burned down, so this is the original one. <laughs> Everywhere we go, souvenir shop. What are you going to buy? 
Korean passport. They have it here. Yeah, you can travel a lot on that, I think. Yeah. Nice, man. Where are you going to go first? To Korea. <laughs> it was time for lunch, which was at the nearby six star Hyangsang Hotel, which is apparently North Korea's best hotel and was built with a Stanilist architecture in mind and is 15 stories tall. Come ask me the. <laughs> Inside was pretty empty. Perhaps no one could afford a night here. Quite a filling lunch that we just had. It started off with cucumber, then bread, then a soup, then rice and duck and some sort of a fungus, and then chicken. Probably missing something. And beer as well. I wasn't expecting beer to be free, but it is. Happy days. Back to Pyongyang we go. to go wee wee or as we say sing, sing a song <laughs> so uh, we pulled in the side of the road and we did a pee on the side of the highway oh in North Korea houses of those apartments are given to the teachers and lecturers of Kim Il-sung University. So here in our country we have the top university here is Kim Il-sung University. Our next stop was the library which was a magnificent building. Upon entry there was a massive statue of Kim Il-sung but we were told no photos. So we can say that it's the biggest national library in our country. So it covers an area of 100,000 square meters. And it has around 30 million volumes of books. Inside the Pyongyang Library right now. Massive, massive building. Again, <laughs> waiting for the elevator to go up to the sixth floor. We had a look at a study hall and just in case those studying there needed some motivation, all of the desks were conveniently pointing directly towards the big, warm smiles of the great leaders. If that's not encouraging enough, I don't know what is. We took the elevator onto one of the many balconies that overlooked Kim Il-sung Square and the surrounding areas. Up on top of the library right now, spectacular views of Pyongyang. Massive square over there, massive tower with a flame on top, which uh, Miss Kim explained to me the meaning, etc. But I'm not gonna lie, it was very confusing. And yeah, you can see the eternal leaders in the distance. In fact, you can see them all over the city. Rob, thoughts? Yeah, it's pretty spectacular. And that's the square where they do all the massive parades. So it's pretty cool to see in um, person. Yeah. We went back inside and lo and behold, more souvenirs and books for sale. Kim Jong-il on the art of music and the art of cinema. Talented guy, huh? Remember I said we weren't allowed to film the statue of Kim Il-sung on the way in? Well, I got a sly vid on the way out. Not the best, but we'll give you an idea. Next up, we were taking a ride on the Pyongyang Metro, which was a short ride away. At school, at home, and 
in the society they're taught uh, to do good things, right? So they learn how to take care of every grass, every tree that is on the street, that is in the house, that is uh, in the school. And by they learning how to take care of them, they learn about patriotism, they learn about uh, to love their country. Okay, here we are in the metro, this is Prosperity Station. We're about to take a ride of the Pyongyang Metro, the deepest metro in the world, baby. According to our guides, Pyongyang Metro was built in five years between 1968 and 1973. There are just two lines, one from north to south and the other from east to west. It's 110 meters deep because of the Taidong and Padong rivers. There are 17 stations in total, all decorated and named according to the station. It's the most popular mode of public transport in the city and is open from 6 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. but sometimes closes at 9.35 p.m. just in case some people are running a little late. It's pretty cool, it's so, it's, it's so interesting. Just looking at every all the faces when we go past us, you know, and they're just staring at us as if obviously never seen anything like us. The station was very old looking but also very beautiful. It reminded me of the Moscow Metro. It costs three North Korean won to use, which is worth about five US cent, although online sources say it's worth even less than that. We were supposed to get off at a few different stations, but apparently we were behind on schedule, so we were just riding directly to our destination. This is surreal to say the least. We were off, sitting among local North Koreans as they commuted home for the evening. Interestingly enough, the carriages on this metro were originally in service in Berlin, Germany and were sold to North Korea at the end of the 20th century. Real or fake, I was surprised to see the guy opposite me wearing a pair of Nike runners. You'll notice the people getting on at this station are a bit shocked at the sight of us. A shame really, I wonder what they must be thinking. This guy's using a smartphone. North Koreans do have them and they are connected to each other on an intranet monitored by the government, but your everyday people aren't connected to the internet. Please, please. stops on the metro now and there's just these strange tunes blasting out of the speakers all over the place. Hey! Unfortunately, after this nice interaction, Robbie witnessed a woman from the station giving out to these kids for interacting with us. When we exited the metro on the other side, we were greeted by the Arch of Triumph, built to commemorate the Korean resistance to Japan. It's bigger than the one in Paris and the second largest in the world. The largest is in Mexico. So that was the deepest metro in the world. We're out of there now. We got a few little interactions with people. I nodded at a guy on the metro. He smiled back and shook hands with the young, the young little kids. Nice. Robbie was approached by a young North Korean keen on practicing his English. He handed Robbie his notebook and we had a look. I also noticed he was wearing trendy Adidas runners. We were back on the bus and on our way to have dinner when we realized it was the birthday of Michael, one of our fellow travelers. Happy birthday to you. For he is a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. <laughs> you see it in the round Happy birthday, big man. Happy birthday. <laughs> I'm a little bit sad that I'm not at the same table as the birthday boy because they have the cake on their one, we don't on ours. <laughs> it's 
an unusual combo there, Rob. I see a slice of watermelon. <laughs> Just to clean the pal palate, you know? <laughs> it's a lot of food there, in fairness. And it spins around. So if you see something you like, bring it around to you, baby. I think we're about to get a bit of in-dinner entertainment. It looks like we chose the right table after all. <laughs> Mortified? Eh? Mortified? Yes. <laughs> After dinner and what can only be described as a mini concert, we headed back to the hotel for the night. Back in the hotel now. A very, very, very long day. But a very, very interesting. Interesting, good day. Yeah, amazing. I'm very happy with this tour so far, if I'm perfectly honest with you. Yeah, it so is. We have two lovely guides. We have one really nice local guide. And we have 14, no, 13 other people on the tour who are really, really cool. Yeah, so everything's going well so far. It's been a good day one. And we'll see you tomorrow in the next video for day two, <laughs> for whatever day's next. <laughs> All right, so if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Comment down below, let me know your thoughts. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. All right. See you real soon. Good, Good luck. luck.